So good morning. Uh, thank you, Adam, for uh, the introduction. And uh, thank you, Herbert, for the invitation uh, to give this uh, presentation for the Data Site Annual Meeting. So um, as I was introduced, I'm uh, uh, Mustafa Mokrain. I'm the Executive Director of the International Program Office of the World Data System in t um, based in Tokyo. Uh, since actually May 2012, we're based in Tokyo. Uh, before, we didn't have a permanent secretariat for the, the, the former system, the World Data Centers. So this is uh, really a, a big change for, uh, for the system. Um, I would like to first introduce the World Data System as um, an interdisciplinary body of ICSU, the International Council for Science. You've heard yesterday from Simon uh, that Simon Hudson, CoData also is an interdisciplinary body of ICSU, so we're two kind of closely connected organizations primarily concerned with, with data issues operating under ICSU. And I highlighted here um, on this slide actually the, the ICSU long-term vision when it comes to um, data questions, data-related issues. So the long-term vision of ICSU is um, of a world where excellence in science is efficiently translated into policy making and socioeconomic development. And in such a world, uh, universal and equitable access to scientific data and information is a reality. So you can understand very easily that both CoData and, and the World Data System have a direct mandate under the ICSU umbrella to operate in this area of universal and equitable access to scientific data and information, and of course linked to the research programs sponsored by ICSU, because ICSU is mostly concerned with uh, sponsoring international research collaboration and also a link with science policy, um, providing a link with science policy. So the World Data System is actually governed by a unique body, so we keep bureaucracy to its minimum. Uh, we have a scientific committee uh, appointed by the ICSU Executive Board, and as you can see, it's a very diverse, geographically speaking, group of leading uh, 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 data experts and also science, science experts, so it's a good balance between research and, and, and data competencies in, on this group. Uh, some of the, the people like Francoise Genova are sitting in this room, so I would like to highlight their, their, their presence here. Um, and it's chaired by uh, Bernard, Bernard Minster. Um, so um, beyond um, the governing body, uh, WDS is a membership organization. And actually, we're trying to redefine um, WDS members um, as scientific data services. And we, what we mean by scientific data services are uh, basically um, services that assist organizations in the capture, uh, storage, curation, long-term preservation, discovery, access, retrieval, aggregation, analysis, visualization of scientific data, as well as other associated services like legal frameworks. And of course, all of this in support of disciplinary and multidisciplinary scientific research, because this is clearly um, the focus for, uh, for ICSU. I had my timer on, and I haven't started it. So sorry, Adam, I'm not following on the time. <laughs> yeah, OK, thanks. <laughs> um, so what about, uh, actually, um, the concrete membership of the World Data System? So it builds on um, a historical legacy of the former World Data Centers, the ICSU World Data Centers, and also uh, the Federation of Data Analysis Services, but it's really a rebranded services. We have four uh, a rebranded system. We have four categories of membership, uh, regular members, network members, partner members, and associate members. Regular and network members are actually the, the data holders or the data stewards as we're trying to uh, define them uh, currently. So uh, we have currently certified uh, 57 regular members basically data repositories, multidisciplinary or disciplinary data repositories. Uh, and they're entrusted with this function of, of being uh, data stewards. Uh, and also, they provide uh, data analysis services. We have also um, network members. And the network members also are certified according to a catalog of um, uh, criteria uh, to ensure their trustworthiness, uh, uh, et cetera. And these are mostly umbrella bodies. Um, they are groups of uh, regular members, um, and they provide a coordination level uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, WDS uh, regular members. So some examples, the NASA EOSTIS project, which brings together all the NASA uh, digital 
uh, active archive centers or the IODE, the International Ocean Oceanographic Data Exchange uh, Program, which brings together national oceanographic data centers. So this is more a, a disciplinary network. We have also the IVOA, uh, uh, the International Virtual Observatory Alliance, which brings at least together uh, um, uh, the astronomical data centers in an in interoperability uh, framework. But um, François Genova is uh, more apt to, to talk about IVOA than, than I am. Um, we have also partner members and associates, and I wanted to highlight that DataSite is a partner member of, of WDS, and I also checked that I can announce today, uh, checked with Adam and Jan, that uh, we are uh, in ready to sign a memorandum of understanding be between XOL Data System and, and DataSite to uh, provide a framework for collaboration, which is really exciting news. Uh, I think it's uh, something we're looking forward uh, to uh, in terms of collaboration. Um, so this is for, for the membership, the geographical distribution of, of our membership. So I, oh, I'm always hesitant to use this map to illustrate the geographical distribution because it's a bit misleading. Um, the blue numbers represent the regular members, so these are um, easy to map on, uh, uh, on a world map because they have a, a, national, uh, a, a, a national point. Um, but the network members um, are covering overlapping, um, a num an overlapping number of, of countries, so it's very uh, difficult in terms of visualization here to give you an idea of the, of the coverage. But in summary, we are a global organization, and we have really uh, an international and multidisciplinary uh, coverage. We published recently our strategic plan in 2000, uh, for the period 2014-2018, and I wanted just to give you an idea of the strategic targets so, so that you can understand what we're trying to achieve, uh, what the World Data System is trying to achieve uh, uh, in this period. So the, the first strategic target is to make trusted data services, the ones I defined earlier, an integral part of international collaborative scientific research. So we're trying to build stronger bridges between the research programs, and in particular the one sponsored by ICSU, and uh, the trusted data services we're promoting. The second strategic target is to nurture active disciplinary and multidisciplinary data communities. And, and here we have identified that some communities in some domains have matured enough have adopted already interoperability agreements, arrangements, and have um, uh, agreed on providing some uh, services to their communities. In other domains, um, there's still work to be done, and we're trying here also to promote those communities to get together and, and mature uh, um, to provide those services. The third strategic target is to improve the funding environment for scientific data services, increase their, their sustainability, and for this, we're trying to work with research funders we have uh, strong collaborations with, uh, for example, the, the Belmont Forum, uh, which is a group of funding agencies for uh, global, global change research. Um, the fourth strategic target is um, to improve trust in and quality of open scientific data services. I think this is um, one that I will concentrate on in the rest of, of my talk because um, I will try to give you some context about the data publication activities uh, uh, we're promoting um, in WDS. And the final uh, strategic target, target is, is really to position uh, XU World Data System as a premium global multi multidisciplinary network for quality assessed, and I, I, I insist really on, on, on this point here, quality assessed scientific research data. So, um, jumping into the publishing data aspect, because uh, the idea of this presentation is to put the publishing data activities in the context of of the world data system uh, concept. Um, and, and building on the strategic target I just mentioned, improve trust in and quality of open scientific data services, we believe that uh, by facilitating access to and use and reuse of data sets through the data publication uh, concept, we are improving the trust in and also the quality of open scientific data, or we are promoting that. Um, I will not really go into the details of, of the data publication as, as a concept. I think we had very good presentations yesterday, introducing even the where it started, and um, some of the former World Data Centers were key in, in maturing that, thinking around uh, the concept of, of data publication, as well as being part of uh, founding members of, of, of DataSite. 
So WDS, building on that uh, experience, um, uh, we established a, a working group, uh, which uh, later became endorsed by the Research Data Alliance as an interest group. So we're operating this uh, uh, jointly with, with RDA. Um, it is also um, a hot topic uh, in, in the Research Data Alliance community. At the last uh, plenary, uh, it was a very well attended uh, breakout uh, session um, as well. Now, um, building bridges with the previous presentation on the long tail, I think uh, uh, I, I will try to illustrate how data publication or the data publication concept is, uh, or we hope is, is going to improve the, the, the quality and the availability of, of, um, of uh, research data, scientific data. So if we look here at the distribution of um, the data sets out there, the scientific data sets out there, uh, uh, in relation to their fitness for, for use, uh, you can here uh, see that uh, there's in, in yellow here a portion of this data, uh, of these data, uh, which are managed and published data, uh, mostly uh, data coming from large-scale monitoring uh, initiatives, projects, computed data, but also data uh, uh, deposited in disciplinary and multidisciplinary data centers, such as members of, of the, world data, uh, the world data system. Uh, but in proportion, you can see how, how it fits into, into this, into this uh, 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 compared to the, the other parts. In green, uh, we have what we call the somewhat managed and open access data. These are data sets uh, um, stored mostly in institutional repositories. Um, so they're open, uh, they're discoverable, but they have varying uh, levels of quality when it comes to the metadata and also in terms of long-term preservation arrangements, um, et cetera. And then you have the long tail, <laughs> the gray part, uh, which is what we consider unmanaged and non-published data. So from individual projects, scientists, labs, sitting on USB sticks and, and you know all that story. Um, so how data publication can play a role here, uh, we see it really um, um, uh, as a mean to um, move the data sets available here in the long tail towards so the, the yellow and the green part. So making it more discoverable, making it more usable and, and reusable. So in the context of this data publication interest group, um, at least uh, four uh, uh, areas of focus have been um, identified to, to try and bring together uh, uh, this uh, concept of uh, data publication. Um, addressing uh, data publication workflows, addressing also um, services. In fact, I should move to, to this slide where I have the list of uh, the various work groups that, working groups that have been established under this uh, interest group, uh, publishing data interest group. So the workflows working group will um, um, try to deliver uh, a generic workflow model or at least address generic workflow models for uh, pub data publication. Um, there's a, a working group on uh, bibliometrics, uh, uh, co-chaired co by uh, Sarah, who is sitting also in, in this room, uh, uh, and Kirsten Leonard. And uh, it's looking at approaches and solutions to allow analysis and, 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 uh, of content uh, uh, and, and proper ci citations in the context of, of data publication. There's also um, a working group slash interest group. This is a, a nomenclature uh, issue. <laughs> between WDS and, and RDA, but it's addressing cost recovery models and uh, looking at business models to um, um, see how we can accommodate uh, this data publication approach and ensure sustainability of, of data re repositories in terms of, of funding. And uh, finally, uh, there's a, a services working group, and I will give a little bit more uh, context to that one. How am I doing in terms of time? Um, the services working group, and this one is really looking more closely to providing cross-referencing uh, um, services. So I'll, I'll give you a little bit more details on, on this one uh, in the five minutes left. Um, so in, in summary, um, the whole initiative around data publication is really about creating better links between data repositories, data service providers, and uh, uh, scholarly uh, publishing. Uh, for example, linking the editorial workflows and also linking um, the, the services between, uh, between the two. I have to uh, also um, uh, uh, mention that this interest group um, 
has a very wide representation of the stakeholders involved in, in, this, uh, in this initiative, in, in the data publication. Uh, research facilities are represented, data repositories, data service providers, universities, libraries, industry uh, 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 stakeholders as well are, are there. So it, it, it's really, um, uh, I think, what's starting to shape is a so, some sort of consortium around this idea of data publication. It's a coalition of, uh, of the willing and, and hopefully also er, early adopters and also testers of, um, of the first pilots for, uh, uh, implement, after, for implementation coming out of, of this working group. So as I said, I wanted to concentrate a little bit on the data publication services working group. Uh, so this uh, working group is really or came to the conclusion that there is no common framework for cross-referencing data sets and articles. And it's proposing to create um, this service to connect data sets and, and, and articles. Um, as you can see on, 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 on the, the, the figure below, on the left-hand side, this is the, the current situation is um, a great number, a plethora of uh, bilateral, mostly uh, bilateral agreements between uh, the stakeholders, the publishers, the data centers, uh, bibliometric service providers, and, and this is clearly not uh, uh, very efficient when we try to scale up uh, uh, such uh, a system. So what this working group is, is proposing and, and, and exploring is the possibility to build up a cross-referencing -reference, reference, service to serve as um, a, a one-stop shop, uh, to say, uh, uh, to, to use a, a common term, uh, w which all um, stakeholders, uh, publishers, data centers, bibliometrics uh, services, and possibly new uh, functionalities to be uh, created to serve uh, research could uh, could use. Um, so, in in general, uh, w what are the current risks with this data publication concept, and and where where, where we're seeing it going? I think it. It, it brings some uh, questions, and in fact, I don't have necessarily answers for all of them, but I, think, I thought it was interesting to bring them to the table here uh, for discussion. Uh, how do data publication services fit in the, the global data infrastructures? I will try to give a, a beginning of an, an answer, maybe, uh, in, the, in my last slides. And also, uh, another uh, question in how, how scholarly publishing itself will evolve uh, over the next decades, because this is, a, I think, a moving target. So while developing the concept of data publication, we have to take this into consideration, and, and the working groups have to keep an eye on it. Um, it's not clear the impact of data publications. What is the exact impact of data publications? We heard this question many times yesterday, and uh, uh, I think there are some studies already on, in that field, but I think we have to monitor uh, that aspect as well. All what these working group these working groups will come up will have implications on uh, uh, stakeholders in terms of uh, organizational and technical requirements. So how these stakeholders, as I mentioned, will adopt and and endorse these requirements is um, a big question mark. Although we're hoping that this consortium concept will will uh, enable that. And finally, what are the costs, of course, of of that, and is it is it sustainable? So. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer for all of these, and <laughs> I'm uh, here to discuss these uh, with you. Uh, but I wanted to give you also some uh, context, um, to, or rather to put the data publication uh, work we're doing in the context of other WDS activities. And one of these activities is actually um, the concept of a knowledge network, a WDS knowledge network being uh, developed by uh, a, w a WDS working group. So it's, um, as I have on the slide here, a web-based, uh, interlinked repository of relationships between the actors and entities that make the research landscape. So these are the people, uh, institutions, data services, projects, uh, also topics of research, uh, funding uh, bodies, uh, etc. So we're aiming to, to develop such, such a resource, but the, in order to, to, to be in a position to, to develop this resource, we recognize that, and, and also we support the vision that uh, we need a, a, an interlinked foundational uh, global research infrastructure. Um, and this infrastructure needs to be sustainable, needs to be scalable, and also, because there's no other, uh, no other choice, we think, it needs to be distributed amongst uh, leading organizations, data centers, data service providers, 
uh, initiatives, etc. And every uh, um, everyone will take a responsibility over parts of, of that distributed global research infrastructure. And we really, uh, in, in the context of this vision or this concept, we really hope to draw on uh, the example of the linked open data approach and to reuse many of the existing services and components, uh, standards, um, etc., and provided by existing um, organizations. So if we just look at one representation of this knowledge network as it is currently developed by this uh, working group, you can see here in, in the red uh, bubbles uh, the, the elements of this uh, knowledge network. So you have the people, the projects, institutions, research uh, data, uh, outputs, uh, trusted digital repositories, citations, all of these um, are interlinked. And the, the relationships between these are actually mined from, uh, <clears throat> from the metadata available within WDS member data repositories. But most uh, uh, interestingly, we, we do not want to limit it to uh, data mining metadata, but also including additional resources, non-traditional resources such as uh, social media, uh, citizen science um, uh, uh, projects, uh, etc. So in this concept or in this uh, spirit of reusing uh, uh, as much as possible uh, the, the existing and leveraging the existing infrastructure, um, we have um, uh, in, uh, identified on this figure what exists and what we think is possibly coming to fruition and, and what needs to be uh, developed further. So uh, you can understand that for citations there's a already an organization here, data site, that's providing uh, such a service we could build on. Uh, other organizations like, like ORCID in assigning persistence identifiers for people are also providing this. But here you can see also the link with the data publication work with the publishing services uh, 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 working group trying to build together this cross-referencing system between articles and uh, data sets. It fits completely into this concept of uh, the knowledge network, and we will be able to build on those services. Um, I think I'm, get, I'm going over time, so I'll have to speed up. <laughs> uh, the final point I would like to stress, and um, because this is also a, uh, an area of uh, possible synergies with, with data site, is uh, this uh, bubble here, the trusted digital repositories, and, uh, and the need also to build a, a, a registry for trusted digital repositories. So WDS provides uh, and, and it's not the only institution providing this, a framework for certification for trusted digital repositories and services. It's considered a lightweight uh, certification uh, framework. Uh, together with the data seal of approval, we're trying even to consolidate this and provide a streamlined uh, uh, lightweight certification. But there are others going to the highly demanding ISO, uh, ISO standard. So um, what we envision here to help that uh, knowledge network, build that knowledge network, is a global registry of trusted digital repositories. And we're really looking forward to the, uh, the current developments, uh, the RE3 data, data bib, for example, merger uh, under uh, data site um, umbrella. And we see here really a, a, a synergy and um, WDS could, uh, for example, endeavor to uh, maintain a subset of that registry to uh, uh, um, define trusted digital repositories uh, together possibly with other organizations and extending those certification properties to, to uh, uh, other, uh, other schema. Um, finally, um, I will skip this one, the benefits uh, of the global uh, registry. Um, we can discuss this offline. And um, I would just thank uh, contributors to, for this presentation, Wim Hugo from say on NRF on the Knowledge Network. Uh, activity, Michael Dippenbrook on the data publication, and most importantly, all the co-chairs and contributors of the various working groups and interest groups. I've listed the co-chairs here. Uh, these are people contributing voluntarily to these groups, and I really uh, uh, would like to uh, uh, extend my thanks and, 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 and uh, for, for their involvement in this work. And as Simon mentioned, we have an exciting conference coming up in New Delhi, SciDataCon. Um, we hope that many of you uh, have submitted papers or are planning to attend. We really want to bring together a conference to bridge the gap between data practitioners and, and the research program. So this is the final slide. Thank you. Mm -hmm.